Prakash Guru from Melissa Warden's lab in Cornell University. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the COSINE organizers for organizing this meeting and giving me the opportunity to present my work. Josh Berg gave a fantastic talk on what document means. Uh, I'm going to add to the story by giving some amount of, some of the information we collected on document neurons in mediating goal-directed behavior. Okay, as we all know, uh, mid midbrain for a long period of time, for the past 20 years, uh, Wolfram Schulz and colleagues, colleagues uh, discovered reward prediction error in monkey dopamine neurons. Uh, these neurons increase their firing for surprisingly good rewards or surprising cues which predict reward. Especially when there is, when the reward is fully expected, they don't see uh, increased change in firing. So this has been very influential and it has brought together computer science and neuroscience, and it's really helpful in understanding the brain function and learning. And this has been observed in other uh, organisms, other species uh, such as mice and songbirds in different tasks, and it's really good, and it's supposed to be quite general. But uh, not all of the studies, many, but not all of the studies have been done in head-fixed classical conditioning case. Uh, they are not done in freely behaving animals. Uh, in this in this cases, the animal doesn't have to do anything. It just has to passively experience the cues or reward in this case. Uh, a few years ago, uh, one of the fantastic work from Anne Gabriel's lab showed that recorded dopamine concentration in a ventral striatum of a rat, and the rat is navigating through a sea maze. Um, and what they found is that the dopamine concentration slowly ramped up as it reaches the goal. Even though there were sensory cues, like cues and tones similar to classical conditioning, they didn't observe reward prediction errors. So what does this mean? This is really interesting, though. I mean, one, obviously, that behavior is different, as Josh Buck mentioned. This is an, a freely behaving animal, and it's doing an operant behavior. Why do we see ramps here and not here? So that's this question we wanted to ask. Um, so. This is what we observe. Rams, in, uh, rams have been observed in intermediate stratum as the animals are moving towards goals. First question is if these rams are produced in the, because of neural activity in VTA. So if it, is, if, it is good, if it is ramping up, then it's good, something we learn new. If it is not, it could be reflecting increased tonic VTA uh, activity, but with insufficient dopamine reuptake. Or it could also, as Josh Brook mentioned, it could also reflect uh, terminal release without a change in spiking activity. Modulation in striatum. Okay. So some of the other deeper questions which you asked for was what conditions are necessary to produce these ramps? Uh, so uh, people from uh, Anne Gable's lab showed that spatial proximity is a model uh, which fits better on ramps and than a time elapsed model. So next question which you ask is like, is movement, movement through space required? Or is the progression to the task sufficient to uh, generate these ramping signals? Other questions like, is a goal required? Or just movement and reward is enough? Other, like, like Josh Beck mentioned, is a physical effort work necessary? Is agency necessary or attention necessary? And things like that. So further questions which we hope to address are like, um, can we incorporate this ramping signal in the reward prediction framework as we discussed during the questions? Um, or do we need to have more of a broader framework in which we can incorporate all of these together? Okay. And finally, what does the computational role of the ramps are? So to test the first question, if these, are, these ramps is produced because of uh, neural activity or not, we used fiber photometry. It's, it's a form of calcium imaging where we inject a virus in medial VTA and then we implant an optical fiber and then measure the bulk fluorescence. So we injected a Cree dependent GCAM 6M in medial VTA in a DAT Cree TD tomato animal. So we can be, look at the neural activity, calcium activity of a dopamine neurons in this region. Okay. so. We record this activity in a simple navigation task. The animal has to run back and forth in a linear track. 
on one side, it gets big reward. On the other side, it gets small reward. Uh, so it just has to run back and forth and it'll get reward. So here is a plot of raw neural activity from, for, for one, from one, one animal. So black represents DF4F, change in fluorescence. Green represents speed. And red and blue represents when the animal is in the big reward zone or in the small reward zone. These arrows represent if the animal is running towards the big reward. As you can see, when the animal is running towards the big reward in this transition region, the neural activity ramps up. When it is running to the small reward, it is not as much ramping up. It's shallow. This is surprising. Um, so this is the average activity, as you can see from this figure. So when animal is running towards big reward, the ramp is much higher compared to when animal is running towards small reward. So this activity is sensitive to reward magnitude. Next we asked if this is dependent on uh, reward location. So on day one, we had big reward on the right side and small reward on the left side. And as you can see, big reward has a higher ramp, higher slope compared to small reward from this population data. On the next day, we switched the sides and then found that, so big reward is now on the left side and small reward is on the right side. As you can see, the activity also switched and it is significant. Okay. So next we asked if this, is, uh, this activity is sensitive to reward probability. We modified the task a little bit. So the now animal has to poke on one side and collect reward on the other side. The behavior is in blocks. So first 40 trials, the animal gets 100% of the reward of the time. Um, and the next 40 trials, it gets reward only 50% of the time. And this is a raw activity from a single mouse in a one session. So if you can see here, it is aligned to poke. And each black line here is, a, is the lick onset. And this is when they're running towards the lick. It is sorted based on the lick late, poke to lick latency. And this is the first block where 100% of the trial, as you can see, there's a some amount of activity, and this is 50% block, and you see less activity, and this is 100% block again, and you see higher activity again during this running period. And this is the average for this mouse. Um, as they're running to the big reward, there's a higher slope than when it's running to the small reward, and it is consistent across the population. Okay. Okay, so thus far, what we have determined is that Neural activity in dopamine cells ramp up as the animal runs toward the towards toward rewards in linear track. And the slope of this ramp is sensitive to reward magnitude, reward location, and reward uh, probability. But this doesn't answer the question why we see ramps in the classical, uh, we don't see it in classical conditioning, but see it in like moving, uh, when the animal is moving towards the goal. There are lots of differences. One is in the classical conditioning, the animals are head fixed. And here, the animal is freely moving. Uh, when an animal is freely moving, it has a constant sensory information indicating where the animal actually is. Um, so there is a theory that since the animal is moving, when animals can actually see where they are uh, in, the in, part, in reference to the reward, uh, there is a reward prediction at each point in time. So we wanted to test this argument. We chose two factors, uh, state uh, agency and space. Okay, so to test this, we designed a task in which the animal has to run in a running wheel and collect reward. So the animal has to start its run and run for five, five feet continuously in a running wheel and then stop and collect the reward. So in this task, we have removed the explicit sensory information uh, as the animals are going closer to reward. It, it has to, it is similar to linear track in a way that it has to expand uh, physical effort um, and it has to keep track of its goal in its mind, uh, how much it has run, and things like that. But there are no external cues, sensory cues telling it, it is this far away from the reward. Okay, so it has to start running, run continuously for five feet and then it has to stop running. Um, so and if the animal does this correctly, then the cue turns on and the reward is delivered at the same same time. So in order to succeed this, the animal has to keep uh, internal representation of the task. Okay, so as a control group, 
we have another uh, group of mice in which they do the same thing, but they don't have to run to collect the reward. They can just run, or they, can, they don't have to run. But the reward will be delivered at the same time as these animals. So the reward schedule is the same. They collect the same number of rewards, but the reward delivery is not dependent on their behavior. In this case, the animal doesn't have to, rec it's not necessary for the animal to keep a representation of the task. They can just do whatever they want, okay? Okay, so here is a video of a mouse. Mouse is running, and then it stops, and then it collects the reward. Q comes on, and then it collects the reward. Okay. Here is a raw trace. Surprisingly, what we find is that as the animal is running towards the goal, uh, the neural activity ramps up, and then it peaks at the reward, and then it goes down. On the non-contingent case, where the animal can is, is not controlling the reward delivery, the animal exhibits similar reward uh, velocity bouts, but you don't see a ramp in the DFR of trace. So what this means is that, um, so this is average plot. It is aligned to Q, and you can see here in this, just before the Q, the animal, uh, the DFR activity ramps up. In the non-contingent case, it doesn't ramp up. Okay. So, so the conclusion is task progress is sufficient, but physical space is not required for the animal to, uh, for the DFRF to ramp up. Okay. Um, okay, next we ask if dopamine ramps require a physical effort. So we started to, uh, we wanted to use classical conditioning. Here, the animal is just head fixed, and the queues, queue comes on, and the reward is delivered, and it's this, this long. Uh, the other group, here we expect to see a reward prediction error when the queue comes on and when the reward is delivered. In the other case, uh, the reward spot approaches the animal. So there is an active queue telling how far away the reward is, but the animal has, doesn't have to do anything. It does, it's head fixed, it's just sitting, similar to classical conditioning, and we are, we are currently working on it. Uh, I, I cannot show you the data, but uh, if we see a ramp, then it would mean that no physical effort is required, just the information of how far away from the reward is enough. If you don't see enough uh, ramp, then we are going to add agency or physical effort to see if there is a ramp. Okay, here is a movie for animal. The reward approaches, an animal licks. Okay. Okay, to conclude, does activity of dopamine neurons ramp up as animal approaches goal? Yes, which is true. And it is modulated based on reward size and reward probability. And what conditions are necessary to produce this ramp? A goal is necessary, and the representation of the task is necessary. Uh, movement through space is not required, and we are still testing if physical effort is required or not. And there are still a lot of remaining challenges which we hope to uh, find soon. I'd like to thank everyone from Warden Lab and Cornell NBB. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We have time for one quick question. Was the next speaker set up? Can I? Yes. So uh, uh, thank you very much for. Uh, uh, new results. So, uh, uh, regarding the relationship between the dopamine neuron firing and the calcium signal you recorded, yes. have you or somebody uh, checked the how linear or nonlinear or time delay are they? Uh, there are some studies, but we are actually, we want to finalize one behavior and narrow down onto one behavior and then we'll do single unit recording. 